want to start it with the board members, but then open it up to um, the general public. Um, what are the things that, with you know, in this in this um, sort of discussion earlier in terms of change, that the board changes and that then the priorities change and that the economy changes and things change. Um, and so when the when the uh, Greenway started out, as I think we all know, there were going to be four buildings on the Greenway. There was going to be you know, buildings over the ramp parcels, it was going to be a very different place than it is right now. Um, and the realities of, of the financial world and the realities of how hard it is to build anything on a green line, um, even, a, even an improvement in the park takes a lot of planning and a lot of um, engineering to just make sure that the funnel underneath is still okay and everything else, um, that we, we know more now, and yet we, and we now have um, one major capital improvement, um, almost complete, and plenty raised for it, and the design done um, in the Carousel and Carousel Park. And we have the beginnings of our public art program and of what we, what we hope to do with that, um, with, the, with, the, with the small things that we've done um, in some parcels, and now with the new RFPs that we have out, out that will go throughout the whole. And so we thought it's been about a year and a half, two years since we've actually brainstormed as a board about what what are the future things we'd like to see. Um, you know, if part of it will be driven by financing, it always is, um, in terms of who might want to give us money to do what. But but so we're not going to be able to say, okay, we're going to do you know this one first, this one second, this one third. But but it would be helpful, I think, for us all to think through um, what are the kinds of things we'd like to see to um, improve the Greenway over the next two to five years. What are the what are the priorities that we have? What are the kinds of things we want to see? Is it activation? Is it um, more beauty and heart culture? Is it um, all of the above? You know, what do we want to see? Um, so when we did this, it's almost two years ago now. It's looking back. Um, it was. It, it was the uh, a, a, a meeting in the spring of 2011 um, that we talked about gleams in our eyes. One of them, the carousel had been started at that point, the carousel park to make it really beautiful all around the carousel and really do that was one of them. Um, doing a public art program was the one that got the endorsement right off the bat two years ago. We should really figure out what we mean by public art. We've spent two years doing that and doing the initial study and getting the groups together to think about that. And so now it's time to kind of think through what what we might want to do. Um, Jesse, do you have a PowerPoint on this? No, I just was going to offer to take notes in a way that Oh, I was like, wow, I really didn't think we had a PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was having a senior moment here. Okay, so, so we have, just to review the bidding a little Bit. We have talked before about the possibility of a skating rink on Dewey um, and having that be something that, that would activate in the winter, which is always our time when it's hardest to activate. Um, we've, and we've talked about other things too. So this is really just throwing it out to what are people's priorities. You can throw it out in terms of what you might think are good things, like you'd rather have it be more winter oriented than summer. Um, it could be you want it to be revenue generating versus non-revenue generating, or it might just be an idea that you have that um, is something that you've talked about with others in the community, or it's just your idea that you want to, for us all to think about. And I hope that this is a conversation that we might not be able to do at every board meeting, um, but that two or three times a year that we'll sort of look back on what we've talked about, think about going forward, and Think about what board members really want to work um, on these these um, these ideas. Um, so it's not like if you raise your hand, then you have to spend the next two years working on it. But um, but sort of fair warning that if you if you have an idea that you're passionate about, I assume that you would want to do that anyway. Um, I will throw out that my idea from two years ago that I'm still passionate about and have no time to work on is that I would love to combine something that combines our um, place that we have developed for ourselves as an organic park um, and combine it with educating, um, whether it's high school or that sort of, about that age group, 
um, and have a greenhouse that would have a zero carbon footprint that would be able to have a greenhouse fed by um, the gases from the composting and have it be lit up in the winter that is, you know, so it's beautiful, it creates the, 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 some of the horticulture that will use along the greenway in the rest of the year, that it teaches children how to figure out how you do the math and science of, of horticulture and agriculture, and that it also has an energy efficiency that says this is the way you can actually create plants on the greenway. Um, so that's always been a gleam in my eye. I've done nothing. But, I mean, I, I haven't, I, I've talked, a, I've done a lot of talk. I haven't done a lot of action. But it is something that, um, that, that I would love to see that kind of thing happen. But let's brainstorm. Um, sure. Um, well, I guess what I would say in the back day, so I don't love the Greenway. Um, and this is sort of above my pay scale, and this is where I'd be interested in feedback from urban planners who really understand what is it that draws people um, into a park? What is it that makes a park an integral part of people's lives in the city as Central Park is? Because frankly, I think we all recognize that you know, the problem I think we have with the Greenway is much of it, um, we need, let me put it this way, to me, we need to create, we need to create something that, so it's a destination point for folks who don't abut the Greenway. And to me, that is the biggest gap. That's what's missing. And I, maybe you all understand what those things are. I don't. And I'd be really interested as a board member who wants to leave the board ultimately having um, having helped to make the Greenway a more integral part of people's lives, what is it that we need to do? Because I think that's the gap at this point. I don't know if, if Linda, you want to take that one um, as our director of planning, or if you want, if you're looking for a board discussion, or you want to give us some. So well, I think young um, medicine. Extends to the, the four-point channel. And to the Esplanade. 
So the answer to that, all of that could be done in, in, in kind of a 21st century way uh, without, you know, two-dimensional math, but maybe it can be done for that. And that's so, a fantastic idea. And, you know, just to take lessons from other parts, clearly the bike path in Central Park is a huge draw to people. But I'm a biker, and I bike to the end of the Esplanade, but I, it would be wonderful to be able to sort of continue that Oh, I was just going to say that I, I, I think um, I think I'm now the longest serving member of the board. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but having said that, when I joined the board, the the, the Greenway was still hurt. I mean, a lot of it was still hurt and and fencing. And I think uh, the fact that the carousel is is opening. Picking up on that, we haven't ever looked at theatre on the Greenway. I mean, they have theatre on the common, yeah. and that's a great success. But the Greenway, it's a bit noisy with traffic, but uh, it's, I think it could work. Have we, I mean, have we never had any theatre group on the Greenway? Not that I no. recall. Not in a formal, formal way? Well, I did some mine this past week. <laughs> 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 yeah. Because we do have a great lawn, and we could, we could, we could, we could. <laughs> I love the idea of interconnecting with throughout the state. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just thinking, just going on with Robin was saying, um, has there been any interest in having street musicians related to the subways? I mean, yes. And I, the short answer is yes. Um, and the longer answer might be able to be provided by Jesse or Linda. So. Um, sure. The, um, We've looked into this a couple of times. Um, one of the, uh, I mean, one of the questions has been um, how to keep the the greenway um, from not feeling like an extension of Faneuil Hall, um, and how to have um, something that's particularly distinct. And it hasn't. We've looked into it a couple of times. We've done some research. Charlie's staff has um, done some research on it. It hasn't been a, a focus to launch, but that's been one of the the, the key questions in it. And that Faneuil Hall as a private space is able to um, curate um, in a way that in a public space it's it's harder to do. And how do you assure that um, it is 
you get the quality that you're looking for once you invite all that. What about partnering with one of the colleges or something to have a program where they have a regular basis to performances, like Berkeley, to say, you know, you guys essentially curate it, and then every Thursday night we'll have to do something with your people. So stay tuned for Charlie's presentation. We um, last summer we oh, did so Berkeley. No, no, idea. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, whatever. Last uh, <laughs> last summer we did Berkeley um, concerts uh, every Friday night, I believe, in the Wharf District Parks, and we're exploring a continued partnership. So it is a great idea, one that we um, want to do even more of this summer. Okay, I got a couple other ideas, but before I say them, if you want to tell me what they are, <laughs> I mean, the um, shops. Yeah. Uh, well, we worked on that. It came out pretty good. Um, I was just going to suggest um, that I think one thing I would say is I, I think if you find things that are exciting and interesting to the people around the park, they'll probably be excited and interesting to people in Back Bay and South End as well. I, mean, I don't think they're too much different. Um, but I was going to throw out just a couple of notions, that one of which is some of them don't have to be so fancy or so uh, you know, spectacular. In the winter time, I would love to see snowman building contests for kids in some discrete areas so that people knew if they were you know, by the north end or something, if there was uh, uh, six inches of snow, every time there's six inches of snow, we'll have this little area, we'll have to build a snowman and we'll give little prizes or something silly and you can picture up on the website or something like that. So that it's interactive in a way that doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be spectacular, but parents can go out with their kids and build a snowman. Or maybe there's an igloo building. I don't know much about, I don't like the by the way, so I don't really know what activities, but maybe it's simple as we bring someone out to show kids how to build an igloo in the winter time. It's not expensive, someone has done it before and outdoors, maybe they just do it. Um, so low tech, simple, not expensive things can also be really fun too, but I think it has to be somewhat organized in the sense of people just knowing that it's going to be there and people can go out and do it. You can do it with your kids and it's not just you can always go build a snowman there, but it might be fun if it's a contest and you'll build fancy and build big things and all that. I love the the skating rink, Jordan. You know I love that idea. I think it's fantastic. I'm pushing for the notion of people playing hockey on it as well. I'm not a hockey player myself, but I think it would be fantastic. And um, then I think we can interact, be interactive with the neighborhoods around it where we give opportunities to kids who never even learn to skate, get opportunities to do that. Um, I would also suggest discrete sports being uh, played on the Greenway. I know people don't want to turn it into like you know a, 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 a high school field, but nine ball volleyball is very popular in Chinatown. We can play it, you know, on discrete weekend. They can, we can we can organize a tournament and we can have it played on the Chinatown Park on that concrete or whatever you call it, stone area. Um, and it would be really, I think it'd be really uh, exciting if, if we sponsored it, made it an event, you know, you know, people love to watch it. So one-off events like that for sports might be fun too, get people down there, and they, they love other things, other things, so those are some ideas. Also the ultimate racing. Racing is
So I, I don't know if I can answer that, but I think that um, we've certainly evolved with programming on the Greenway since I've been on the board, which wasn't since the beginning, um, from, um, from thinking that we needed to program the Greenway ourselves to partnering with the organizations um, that wanted to program on the Greenway and see our role now in programming as enabling other groups to use the Greenway. So that we had probably four years ago, maybe 50% of what happened on the Greenway, we, our staff actually did and, and did stuff on it, did, did the whole thing. And now, most of what we do, our staff plays a central role in getting it permitted because everything we do pretty much has to get permitted by the state and the city and all that kind of thing. So, We've become experts of permitting on um, different things and of enabling. Um, but little things like the um, the, the toy park, the, 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 the imagination playground. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, that, that is mobile and goes up and down the, the, the freeway. It's been around for two or three years now, and it, it's pretty successful. It's really small. I mean, it's not a big, big thing. You don't hear about it all the time, but it could, people like it and it gets successful. So. I don't know that there's anything that says we shouldn't do it. I think we've, we've tried a lot of things. Some things haven't worked. Things that have, we keep doing it. You know, and, it, and it's very experimental. So that's why this is so great, because obviously everything hasn't been thought of yet. And so you know, we can do things um, experimentally. And, and even ones that have been tried before, because the Greenway is evolving so much, you know, it may be worth trying them again. Yeah, I mean, we've the snowman building contest is something that we tried, but several years ago it was that was a different greenway. We love your ideas, Chris. We love them. No, it wasn't my idea. Someone else's idea already done. Okay. No, but that's exactly right. I mean, just in the last winter, not this winter we've just been through, but the winter before that, um, when we did the chimes um, in the Warp District Park, and they were going to be fabulous every time it snowed, the chimes were going to ring, and it was going to be a sculpture, an ice sculpture. And, yeah. And it never worked because we didn't get any snow. You know? So that, that, that doesn't mean that a chime sculpture wouldn't work. It's just that that winter it didn't. So you know, it, it, it's that kind of thing that you know that it, it you know we're an outdoor park. Some things are going to work better some seasons and, and some years during that season than they are others. Um, but so keep the ideas coming. I I just wanted to do that. Charles said dirt paths and it brought up in my mind my pet project. I'd like to see the paths bathed in the, in the mass forecastle. That's awful in the winter when the mass forecastle is just either icy or they're wet and, or they're closed. And uh, that's been going on a long time. It has, and the, and the solution is fairly expensive. Which is yeah. That's a shame that that's that going on. Sorry, but no, that could go up on all this stuff. So. Yeah. No, I just wanted to expand on what Cheryl said about destinations. I mean, living around the park, I do see a lot of activity, a lot of programming. I think, you know, Charlie is doing just a great job in terms of, of you know, having activity, event type activity in the park. But I, I like to see things that are in there where people just find them. You know, where they, there's a reason to walk the park. You know, there's a reason that each parcel has sort of like a little jewel box or gem or something that makes it worthwhile to take your map and walk the destination from the North End Parks to Chinatown because each park has its own sort of special um, thing or reason for being, you know. And, you know, I think we've started this with the carousel and a number of with the daffodils and everything. So so you're giving people a reason to walk the parks. And, and, and people who are visiting the city aren't necessarily looking for programmed events. They're looking for some place to go because there's something to see and maybe something to do. And something to eat. And something to eat. Is there any comment on or somewhere about the, uh, the ramp? Parcels and you know that does kind of break up as you're walking through no matter what you're doing. And I know there's been some discussion about if there's something we could do that would be terribly expensive around fencing that's there to at least camouflage some of it. Is there any current? There's a lot of thought going on about that. Um, Linda, do you want to address it? Actually, it's 
a program that Charlie Brown shares. Sorry, I never, I never know who's doing what. Right. I'm going to get my moment a little bit here, but um, there's, uh, there's a uh, uh, a festival in the North End. On a series of uh, different kind of experimental things, they actually brought to us a fully funded proposal uh, to do something that's been done at Brooklyn Bridge Park last summer, uh, and it's called Photoville. And yeah, they call it the Fence in Boston, they call it Photoville in New York. Um, and uh, they are actually uh, collecting a, a variety of initiative people in just kind of normal everyday life. We need a chance to review them. They will print the banner and we'll put it up for a period of time, about five or six months. Uh, we're also talking. <coughs> Uh, Nate and Carter Street Humanity and doing a treatment along Cross Street starting later in the summer. And so we're trying to do some of that. Um, yeah, it's, it's really about funding and, and, and finding the right people that can do it. And Parcel 12 is always the one that we really hoped that we were really going to be able to do something with and it's just, you know, big. Um, and uh, it just doesn't seem to be anybody around to do that. Um, the state had a commitment. I think Council 18 is fine the way it is. 18's worked out fairly well, and that was. never intended to be so bad originally. That just brings up something for me, which is um, I think it would be, I know we don't want to have a lot of signage, but a couple people have asked me recently why we aren't doing anything up by the garden. And that's because it's not part of the greenway. <laughs> um, so I think some way of, um, and maybe this is part of what Suzanne's talking about and, and just of the dynamic and the more people of identity and some of what Young is saying. There's a way maybe we find maybe we maybe some of the other friends of the lost horses. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I do think um, there is some confusion out there and, and, and misperceptions that I don't want to cut off more discussion, but if, if everybody's had a chance to say their say, I wonder if anybody um, from the public would like to add or subtract or opine on anything that they've said. Yes, Ben? I, I brought it up at the, the, the workshop in North End. got myself in trouble, so I'll bring it up here. But <laughs> parcel 12, there's a big demand for a dog park. And that's, you know, an instant activation. Yeah. With the, the number of dogs <laughs> in the city. It also can be done on somewhat of a, you know, low-cost basis. You should see what they're using now if you're on Richmond Street on the tunnel building. Uh, it's kind of an unofficial dog park, and it's just basically dirt. So anything. And as soon as I, I wrote up a piece summarizing the workshop, and um, I immediately got you know 10 emails about the dog park. And as you know, there's a group that's organized in the North End that's starting to spread to other neighborhoods called Rough uh, Responsible Urbanites for FIDO. They would uh, love to actively work with them so we can see on the dog park. Well, I, I think it's really interesting. Well, there is a, there is a dog park now. There is a channel park. I lost the ball. Oh. Uh, so if you were interested. It could be. I don't own a dog, but the, uh, I've never been to that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how much do you it's like a nice dog? dog. You know, <laughs> Oh, it was also brought up as a way to connect the, the yeah. North End yeah, Park no, to the Wharf really District know. Park, yeah. Yeah. bring people. Uh, someone from the public issue. market, which is across the street, was there, and they were surprisingly enthusiastic about it. It's also really? not near yeah. where anyone lives, right. you know, per se, so you're not like putting a dog park next to an apartment building. That's going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, Charles, program, the dogs want something that's to look at. Right. <laughs> um, so, anyone else? Listening to all of that, a few thoughts came to mind. One is that it seems the Greenway has a, uh, has a conflict, and a, an identity crisis uh, still. Is it a linear part, or is it a series of distinct parts? And I think part of that identity crisis might come from the individual, might come from the way it was first designed. Into 
today, you mentioned the buildings that are going to be in certain locations along the way. And I think that with those buildings there, those parks would have been more distinct pieces of the whole. And to some extent, they were designed that way, and they are that way today. Uh, they're somewhat distinct and somewhat isolated, too. On the other hand, as this gentleman brought up, some way of being able to kind of take in the whole, as long as you can do it in a comfortable uh, way, in an enjoyable way. And I think at this point that's not the case. I find it very difficult to get from the North End section of the parks through uh, all the various road, roadways in there, especially the roadway where, where uh, Atlantic Avenue takes that turn around, around Christmas. Want to be a series of distinct segments? I think you ought to think more about the connections. Again, going back to what I said earlier about the connections to the downtown areas that existed for a long time. That day, residents might not go to the Greenway for parks purposes, but certainly we have loads of that day people in the North End every night. We have loads of that day people in Chinatown every night. We have loads of that day people. <coughs> on the waterfront all the time in winter. So you may want to draw better connections and make it easier to get from those areas that already have lots of information to, to bring them to the Greenway. I'm not sure you necessarily have to create something a destination, although I like some of the ideas that you had in destinations. Uh, but just better connections that when you go to the North End, you naturally also want to stop I know when I used to go to, uh, it was a restaurant in East Boston called Uncle Pete's. It's about, what is it about? Every in a group of us from the North End would go, sometimes 20 of us would once go. And we always then wanted to go to Peter's Park because it was so easy to get from, even though they weren't all that close together, it was so easy to get there and we could park right there. And so we finished our meal at Uncle Pete's with this incredible view of the Boston skyline from Peter's Park. Well, how can, how can you get to, uh, people to want to go to the North End, have your dinner, and then want to walk up to the Greenway and sit and relax? One of the things might be to create better physical connections between the two. There's just standard crosswalks. We wait a long time to cross the street. There's obviously too much traffic. There's nothing you can do to the traffic. But is there any way that that the roadway connections, the crosswalks themselves, can be part of the, the greenway contents. That you're not just walking in a city street crosswalk. You're walking in a crosswalk that's bringing you into the greenway. Good ideas. You know, I think that we have, um, I don't know if we have an identity crisis, but I do think that we have an, an involvement of our identity. And, you know, the greenway is much more than it was five or six years ago when Maggie joined the board. And it, it's, uh, it's come a long way since then. And, and this whole discussion is about how much farther it can come. And that it needs to be both part of the neighborhoods and part of the whole Greenway. And I don't think that we have to make a choice on that. I think we need to do both. Um, to have it be that there's a Greenway identity and that we're very much integral to the neighborhoods. So I really appreciate it. I'm going to have to wrap this part of the discussion up. Um, but I really appreciate the input, and I, I, I knew what I said in the beginning, that this is not a one-time thing that we're going to talk about this board meeting. Um, this is something that's really central. I mean, if the board has got strategy, one of, our, one of our real strategic purposes is to say, what's the future of the Greenway? So I hope we can continue the discussions, and um, you know, some of this will be around after, but, but we'll also continue it and figure out how we can continue the discussions. It's actually